Great. Hi there, it's Tom Cronin here. I'm the producer and co-writer of the film and book, The Portal. I'm Jackie Pfeiffer. I directed The Portal, produced with Tom, co-wrote the book. How are you guys? I'm Caroline from Hush Hush Biz, and it's a real pleasure to meet you here today at um, the Dendi, which I believe you had a screening here at Cooperu last night. Tell me about it. How was how was the feeling and the vibe of the portal, you know, happening so far for you? And, and please tell us a, a little bit more about it. It's been really great. The cinema here was really beautiful. I've just been saying it's like getting, you know, wrapped up in a cocoon. Uh, everybody, I think, was really ended up in a really wonderful space. People are are kind of just, you know, falling in love with the story as it unfolds and, and ending up feeling, yeah, pretty amazing. Yeah, it's been phenomenal. The feedback's been incredible. People are really connecting in with the depth of the information that's in the film because there's some fascinating concepts that really kind of capture people's attention. They keep feeding back to us that they've been contemplating some of the themes in the film over and over again the next day and the next day which has been really exciting which is what we wanted to create and also um, people wanting to re-watch it because there's there's bits they missed and they wanted to go back and make sure that they, they recaptured some of the experiences and the film is quite experiential you know it's one of those films that it's not just information but it actually moves you into your heart space and cracks your heart open most people have some emotional reaction through the film to some of the stories and and, and because of that, people kind of want to re-engage with that experience and recapture that sensation. And uh, that's a really exciting part about what the film's all about. Yeah, kind of following six, you know, beautiful, poignant stories of people who've moved through crisis and used various transformational kind of tools to, to in all sorts of ways, get themselves into a better state and perhaps change direction in their life. And we kind of like looking at that against a backdrop of like a world in crisis and some of some ideas about how, how we got to the way things are at the moment and some kind of more positive ideas about how we could move forward. How did you, you know, get all these people involved and, 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 and how long has this taken you to put together, you know, overall writing it and, you know, because... You know, you personally, um, Tom, had a, you know, a, a mission to do this, I believe. Yeah, it started seven years ago, so it's been a long process from mm. coming up with this original idea of wanting to use film as a medium to show the power of stillness and meditation the mm. and the ability for humans to alchemize and transform. Mm. And so that was kind of like the early stages of the process, and it just unraveled and sort of grew of its own life force through that process and um, so you know that's kind of been an ongoing process that we're in now which is the final stages of that which is distribution and integration of that film mm. but to find the stories you know we had a phenomenal research team and it was a kind of collaborative effort mm. where you know our research team and Jack and myself you know we were getting impulses of inspiration we're using Google we're connecting with people and groups that put us in touch with people so it's been a, a really sort of you know finding a needle in a haystack, you know, around the world and finding these stories that had transformation in them. And um, yeah, just weeding them down till we got to this amazing story of these six people. So these six people have transformed a lot, not just themselves, but a lot of people around them. And, you know, the statement is here, seven billion people, you know, with the perspective can change, if by your mindset you can change a lot of, you know, the standards of how we live and, you know, through meditation, through being still, um, you know, being in the present mind, you know, is this, you know, something that you feel could happen in time? if everyone, you know, does connect consciously with this. I, yeah, I do think so. I mean, it's there's a lot of work ahead, but I mean, deep down, you know, people don't want to live in conflict, really. You know what I mean? Nobody's really feeling good about any type of internal conflict or conflict that might be externalising, you know, in relationships around them or like in a, in a wider sphere. And I think everybody's on that journey to the yes I want to make a change you know and it's just like at what point 
will you make a change? At what point will I make a change and say, hey, things aren't going so well, or I don't feel so good, or my relationships aren't so good, or like things have really, really hit, like escalated to a personal crisis point. At what point along that journey to that will I decide, yeah, I'm ready to take a different approach now? Mm. And and I think so, so we kind of like explore that idea through the stories and we kind of positing that idea globally at what point along our crisis trajectory will we all collectively say, hey, it's time to do something different? And it starts at the personal level, you know, each person kind of thinking, I do want some movement in a different direction. I do want to follow my passion. I do want to be true to the person that I am or like the desires deep down. I, I think that a lot of the time that internal conflict's coming from not being honest with ourselves about our situation or what's right or what our dreams are and kind of being forced into boxes that maybe we don't really deep down feel like we should be fitting into and so it's kind of we're hoping that this is a little bit of a tool to kickstart some people say hey yeah like I want to do something different I want to do what's right for me and that just you know it's got a sphere of influence it ripples out it's interesting so I feel, you know, it's even with the science aspect that you've pulled into the film, the robots and things, you know, that, uh, you know, tap into obviously our future, you know, with the obviously our digital world, which this is what's stressing everybody out. But yeah, tell us about that, you know, sort of um, area of the film, you know, with the with the robotic, you know, um, messages there. Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons why we wanted to bring in this concept there's a couple of reasons but one of them is to, to show that as humans we're actually programmed through our uh, peers our social media our media our genetics our family conditioning religious political social conditioning so conditioning is programming our mindset which is our operating system and as Mikey Siegel says in the film we create what we are so what we are is a product of what we've been programmed to be but we also show that within the film, we've got these people who are very conscious, uh, who have this capacity to program AI and robots to be unconditionally loving. So if humans are being programmed and AI is being programmed, and we can program AI to be unconditionally loving, then we can program humans to be unconditionally loving. There's a really nice tie-in with that analogy and, and that sort of process, that we have to look at how we're programming humans based upon how we're programming AI. But also flipping that is that if we're programming AI, what is the state of consciousness of the programmers of the AI? Because that in itself is a major problem. And rather than worrying about what we're programming AI with, what we want to look at is what are the state of minds of the programmers and how do we shift collectively the mass state of consciousness so that all of our programming and all of the things that we embed into our products and things that we create is coming from a state of consciousness. So it has to come back to collectively shifting the state of consciousness. And being able to use uh, technology as a tool to help us in that process. That, yeah, yeah. So this is like the bootstrapping. We're constantly up-leveling ourselves. If we um, create a model for a optimum kind of interhuman, you know, interpersonal experience, um, and that they do, you know, the work that Dr. Julia Mossbridge is doing with Hanson Robotics and uh, Sophia the robot, you know, like she, there's this kind of human looking thing that is hijacking our neural network. So you, like initially you're like, oh, it's a robot. But I think that, I mean, I haven't, I mean, we've seen Sophia, well, we haven't been part of the research studies, but from what I can gather, it's, you end up just engaging as though you would with a human, but the experience that you're getting is that there is somebody who is not judging you for anything that you may or may not have done, totally open, totally receptive, and just treating you in an, in an, in an entirely loving and, and accepting way. And so that's kind of getting at people on a deep level, you know, in that kind of experience, they suddenly, oh, so they start opening up. And it's really cool when you hear um, Julia talk more about it. We, we haven't we go deeper in the book than we've been able to with the screen time in the film, but the, the people who were involved in these research studies, they didn't know that it was anything to do with love. And they come out of these encounters saying, oh, you know, like I kind of felt this sensation here and start alluding to love or I'm feeling kind of loving or what have you. And it's, so it's, 
it's provoking that kind of response out of people. And so if that person walks out of that encounter feeling that way, and then they're gonna go and interact in a, you know, taking that energy into their next communication with somebody else. And it's just like those little shifts that just start bit by bit. So how can we use our technology to help us up level? I love it. Guys, you are extraordinary in terms of what you've created here. And I think it's a timely, timely message in vision to, you know, obviously come through to people in, in this very crazy world right now. So I, yeah, what, what can you tell, you know, obviously this film is, you know, obviously got a, a long way to go to get to people is there anything next that you're doing is there is there any planning of other films that you might be doing in the future <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's so all consuming it's so all consuming yeah. this is a big thing with yeah, lots of yeah. Yeah, yeah i know it's massive it's yeah, massive so our next steps are obviously this it's a three-phase process that we're in um that we're in the first phase of three phases the first phase is literally have the film and book be accessed by the world. Yeah, that is really the starting point. Until they see the film, until they read the book, yeah, and they really buy into the vision yeah. and the concepts that we're wanting to share. So that's our number one priority. You know, we're touring Australia at the moment. We're off to mm. Melbourne tonight um, and doing Q and A's. We'll be on the road in America, I think, for you know, thirty days, traveling wow. around in thirty cities. Wow. And you know, and then we're doing schools and prisons and libraries, and oh, really beautiful. having an extensive outreach on the ground to mm. give people a communal experience. And if you look at congregations have been part of history for humankind, you know, churches and yoga and mm. have generally done in congregations, and that's mm. what we want to create with this film: is congregations and events around this experience. So that's the first stage: is awareness. Second stage is integration. You know, how to integrate programs and get people to be able to access tools and mm. modalities to enable them to up-level their state of consciousness because yeah. inspiration is one thing but action is the next thing yeah and then you know down the track who knows you know it could be another film it could be working with government bodies on on policy it could be systems change working with large systems and corporations you know there's so many different ways mental health mental health yeah prisons yeah. it's, it's yeah. veterans it's so yeah. different areas. which i think that is very healing in itself and you know and obviously to connect with love yeah, yeah. well thank you and i wish you all the best and thank Thanks, you for talking to us today thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.